Well, welcome to uh, another special edition of the Tron Church Talking Points podcast. And uh, my name is Paul Brennan, one of the ministers here in the church. And I'm joined by David Ely, who uh, used to be here in Glasgow, but is now further afield. Uh, You've been in Cyprus for the last 18 months. So we're looking forward to just catching up with you, David, and and hearing a bit about your work out in Cyprus. But um, take us back a bit. Uh, some people listening to this will know a lot about you. They'll know you well, but others maybe not so much. Mm-hmm. Um, you're originally from Cumbria, studied in Scotland. You were working here in the Tron for a while. How is it you've ended up living and working in Cyprus? Talk us through how you got to where you are. Yeah, so as, as, as you mentioned, um, grew up in Cumbria, um, moved to Aberdeen to study. And there, uh, a crucial part of the story, I met my wife. Uh, uh, Margarita, who is from Cyprus, uh, and thus the Cyprus story begins. Yeah, okay. um, studied in Aberdeen, moved down, uh, down to Glasgow, did a bit more studying, and then uh, started uh, the training scheme uh, here at the Tron. Yep. Um, and, and about that time that we were considering me starting training with the Tron, um, Margarita and I were, were, were seeing the situation back in Cyprus and thinking... You know, the church there needs, it needs to be strengthened. It needs people who are uh, well-trained to go and commit to, to teaching the Bible mm. um, long-term. We're seeing old friends falling away and, you know, churches filled with people who were, were genuine and enthusiastic in their love for the Lord, but, uh, but just not quite equipped for the, for the task at hand. Um, yeah. And we were starting to get a little bit frustrated that no one was going back sure. to sort it out and then realized that we were also the ones not going back to sort it out. So I um, thought... Well, we're, we're at the Tron. They've got a training scheme. We'll see what happens. Yeah. You know, I don't want to go back and pretend to be trained and ready for this. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll just see. We'll see if I'm suited to this kind of work. We'll see see what the church thinks. Um, and so I signed up for the apprenticeship um, scheme then and carried on. Apprenticeship two years, three years, three and a half years, minister in training, yep. uh, Cornhill, PTC, and... Uh, and just um, <clears throat> the opportunity remained there and the need remained there and it seemed like we were well suited to go back and and, uh, and try and help in some way, not fix all the problems, but um, but try and help out. So Good. So we'll, we'll probably come back to some of those things just mm-hmm. to pick up some of the, the details on that. Um, so you went to Cyprus last January. Yes. Is that right? So yeah, 20, 20, 22. Yeah. yeah. So you've been there about 18 months now. Mm-hmm. Um, help us just get, get a sense of what Cyprus is like. So you've mentioned already just something of the situation with the church, but just try mm-hmm. and help us to help us see through your eyes. You've been there 18 months. What, what's it like on the ground mm-hmm. in terms of uh, Christianity, the church? What's, what's, the state, what's the state of things there? Yeah, uh, the Protestant church is small. Uh, and the evangelical church is even smaller, so we're talking less than 1% of the population. Right. Um, you know, I know of a handful of evangelical churches in our city, Larnaca, yep. uh, and there's a there's a few others in the other big cities, of which there are four on the island. Okay. Outside of that, there's, there, there's, there's nothing, mm-hmm. really. Um, it's a Greek Orthodox um, country. Uh, the vast majority of the population would be uh, nominally, at least, yes, okay. Greek Orthodox. Um, and... The, the the evangelical church there is mainly in uh, um, an English speaking um, expat okay. sort of community, um, small, very theologically diverse, mm-hmm. um, and uh, it it has all of the problems that come with a, a, a small, very theologically diverse um, subgroup of a subgroup, yep. really. Yep. Um, yep. So that's the kind of kind of place it is. It's a struggle to reach out to Greek-speaking Cypriots. Um, uh, the the view, I mean, the view of from what I've seen, the Greek Orthodox Church is uh, claims to have its roots all the way back, right from the beginning. Sure. Uh, and then on the island, we've also got what essentially looks like a, a, a frothy American import. Um, okay. okay. You know, it 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 seems to be of little substance. And uh, and so it's easily disregarded, right? Um, so th- that's kind of how it's viewed, I think, in in comparison to this this big, well-established, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, almost national. Religion. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. Take us back to when you were just going on the, in the months leading up. What what were you going to seek to do? Like, what what did you envisage your ministry? Because you you weren't thinking, let's go for a couple of years and you know this this is a long term yeah desire to yeah. to serve the church in Cyprus. So, what are your going into it? What have been some of your kind of key priorities? What do you want to give yourself to do? Yeah. Our, our key priority really is the local church there. Um, it's it's tempting to think that the Lord is going to use different means in different places to do his work. Mm. Um, but the mean he, means he has, he has appointed, the means he's building is his church. So our priority was to go to settle in uh, the church there and help the local church um, with her work of preaching the word. Um, and to do that long term. Um, as with many places... Cyprus has suffered from a lot of short-term missionary activity okay. at times, coming in, changing things, leaving a bit of a mess, running out of funds uh, and leaving. So it's yeah. quite, quite yeah. important to us that we, uh, we were going there to be under the authority of the church there mm-hmm. um, to, to help build the church and to do that long-term, yeah. um, if possible. Yeah. So fundamentally... What you're doing in Cyprus is what you were doing here. So you, you mentioned that you mm. you've you had five and a half years with the Tron on the church staff mm-hmm. as an apprentice for two years, and then the pastor's training course. Um, how has your time here equipped you? What what what, what did you learn uh, mm. through working in the church through Cornhill? And how has that helped you uh, as you've been in Cyprus? So, mm-hmm. what? That's a tiny question. <laughs> Do you want to ask a bigger question? <laughs> uh, there, is, there is no substitute, I think, for uh, learning theology, Bible, how to handle the Bible, how, how to teach the Bible, alongside actually doing it. Mm. Um, and so... Uh, Before we went to Cyprus, I knew there was stuff I needed to know. Um, but I also realized that there was a kind of person I needed to be. Mm. And I also needed to um, have my ability to do various things tested, really tested in yeah. the arena of the local church. And if that's what I'm going to serve, I need to know that um, I am capable of, of helping there and not destroying things and also learn how to do that. Um, learn the wisdom of doing that with real mm, people, mm. with with volunteers who don't always agree with you, with um, uh, with volunteers who don't turn up, or you know, yep. people who are who are not living ministry the whole time and and uh, not living theological academic thinking the whole time. Whilst also having having the opportunity to really um, learn that as well. Um, and so being at the Tron gave me that opportunity. Mm. You know, um, significant formal education with Cornhill and with the pastor's training yep. course uh, but doing that in a real church community with um, with the chance to to work out those things practically apply those things uh, and learn the wisdom of, of dealing with real people yep. um, I mean that that is I don't think that's unusual for someone in our situation going to you know a foreign place I think that's just what what the church needs everywhere is, yep. is people um, prepared like that to be uh real pastors um not just academic um but people who know how to deal with people people who know how to apply what they're learning um people who are able to see the errors in real life uh, and deal with them or see see where people need to be encouraged in real life and deal Mm. with them and 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 there has been no there could have been no substitute i think yeah um for doing that in the context of the local church which is what being at the tron gave me the opportunity to do yeah and you were you're quite clear I think I'm trying to think back now. It was a while ago when you began, <laughs> but I think even when you were coming into the apprenticeship, Cyprus was kind of it was there. It yeah. was on the horizon, and um, that, that that's always been that always has been one of the potential goals for you. Yeah. Um, but the the basic the fundamental approach to training was the same. So whether mm-hmm. it was you know we're we're looking to equip folk to go and lead churches. Mm-hmm. Around Glasgow, Scotland, mm-hmm. UK, 
um, but further afield. But it's fundamentally the same, mm -hmm. same training mm -hmm. that's required. It's the same work you're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's, as you say, it's reaching the lost through the church, and that's how God mm -hmm. works in this world. So, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the the skills that, you know, matter what context I'm in, uh, whatever situation I'm facing, that the skills needed are really to know the Word of God well and to understand the people who you're trying to apply that word of God to. Mm. I mean, that is fundamentally the task. And, and doing that at the Tron prepared me for doing that in Cyprus mm -hmm. just as well as doing it in Cyprus would have done in many ways. And yeah. Because the word of God is the same um, wherever we are in the world. Uh, and, and whilst there are different situations that we need to apply it to, um, the wisdom of, of working with people who are all made in the image of God, wherever you are, um, you know, you gain that here just like you would yeah. anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. And so, just as you as you were uh, looking at going to Cyprus, it wasn't just the Tron that were playing a role. How did you? you know, there might be folk listening to this who have a similar uh, sort of conviction and uh, desire to go and serve the church, perhaps elsewhere in the world. Um, but you didn't just sort of wing it and decide, you know, I'm going to go and do this. There was other help required. So how, how did you get from from here to landing a church in, in Cyprus? Mm -hmm. What were some of the, the mechanics of that, really? Yeah. So in terms of the church in Cyprus, uh, we, uh, we knew the church there reasonably well. Mm -hmm. We knew people there. Um, uh, Margarita and I have been visiting once or twice a year for the yeah. last 10 years yeah. uh, with family back there and things like that. So we knew individuals there. Um, getting um, getting the church in Cyprus to... Not getting the wrong... is the wrong word. Approaching the church in Cyprus was fairly easy, really. It was me yeah. saying to people we knew already, look, do you need help? This is the training I've got. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, is there scope for me to come? Um, you know, that was... That was fairly easy. But the challenge comes when they say, I mean, yes, of course there's scope here. There's always scope for help, yep. but there's no resources here. There's no funding. Yes. Um, and that's when the, the slightly trickier bit mm. comes in. Um, we, ha I was initially hesitant to be involved with a mission agency yep. in Cyprus yep. because there's a bit of a history there with some mission agencies okay. um, doing their, doing sort of, their own thing without getting involved with the church th yes. that, that is there. Yeah, so you to wanted s something that's going to be focused on the on church. On the church, yep. yeah. Um, something that's going to recognize that the church is the thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and on that basis, uh, I think it was probably Willie recommended Crosslinks yep. to us. Yep. Um, and uh, Crosslinks have been excellent. They're exactly what we were yep. looking for, really. A, a mission agency that realizes that their role is to support the church there and the support the church here yep. and to link between the two rather than to go in with their own programs and, and yes. things that they're trying to do, um, which is ex exactly what we were looking for. Yeah, um, so they, they bring their expertise in terms of all the financial, you know... All of that all logistical, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. tax things, yeah. legal requirements, advice for that kind of stuff, um, and just a, a wealth of experience and bring that, but don't... Um, don't pose yeah yeah what they're trying to do on onto the the church yeah um as within within parameters yeah, you know they're yeah. still looking for bible teaching yeah it's quite, it's quite, a, it, it's quite a rigorous process it, I it is a rigorous process um, yeah, yeah which gives um, confidence well it gives confidence all around doesn't it, it gives it confidence to you uh -huh. if you get the, the go ahead at the end of it they there's an understanding that you're equipped to do this gives us confidence as a church sending absolutely, absolutely. Um, so i think all around that's been a positive fruitful yeah partnership. I, I mean Going, it was a rigorous process. Uh, so what, five interviews, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in total, um, and then a, a week-long orientation bef and a lot of preparation before we could actually go. Um, but as you say, it, it meant that it wasn't just us thinking that we were suited to do it and that we had this thing we wanted to do. Yes. But it was also us. It was also the church here. Yep. Uh, the church there had said yes. And it also meant people who knew what missionary work was like mm -hmm. had said, yes, we think you're suited to do it. Yep. Um, which is a really, uh, a really helpful thing in terms of confidence and yeah. Um, yeah. not feeling like you're a lone ranger <laughs> going right. to do your own thing. Um, That's right. So 
You've been there since January last year. How's it been mm-hmm. going? So what have you been doing over the... We'll talk about the future plans in a minute, but yep. how, how's it been? Um, as a family, moving to Cyprus, what's been going on the first year and a half? Um, moving anywhere is tough. Uh, and it's been tough. Mm. Um, it, uh, you know, we knew going in that we were leaving behind most of what we knew. And Marguerite grew up there, obviously, yes. but she's not lived there since uh, since she was a, a teenager. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So operating as an adult there, it's yeah, a very different sort of thing. thing yeah. um, going back with, you know, a family rather than going back by yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so we knew that it was going to be challenging. But knowing it and then going through it are two different things. Uh, so it has it has been difficult. Yes. Um, mainly, I mean, the big thing really is it just takes time to develop friendships. Uh, there's no getting around it. Yep. If if you want to have close relationships with people, you need to spend time and go through things with them. Uh, really, um, can't uh, fast track. We that. can't fast yeah. track it. You can't. Uh, I mean, you go to university and you kind of can fast track it a little yes. bit because everyone's you know so tightly together doing exactly the same thing all the time. Yep. But after that point, it just takes a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we knew people there already, which made it a bit easier. But even then, these are people that Margarita has not been around as an adult. And things change. People change. People change yep. a lot, yep. uh, particularly yep. between leaving for university and... And now, where yeah. everyone's married and got kids and have had different influences on their, the, yeah. their, their life. Theological and faith. alignments as well. Huge shifts. Yeah. Huge shifts. Um, so trying to re-get to know people um, it's, it has been tough. Uh, it's taken time and, it's, um, and it will take more time yet. Um, uh, that's not to say that we don't have lots of people we're friendly with, yes. uh, but it, just the reality of deep friendships take a yeah. long time to yeah. a long time to develop. Um, so that's been a challenge, and it is also uh, this. This perhaps is going to sound a bit silly, but um, fifteen degrees and sunny in January or December, it sounds it's objectively lovely. <laughs> that's an objectively <laughs> fantastic uh, weather, but when you're used to uh, frost everywhere and and christmas time being very chilly yes. and very dark and it it is really disorientating but discombobulating it you, know, is, you yeah. kind of expect expect certain winter, things yeah. at certain yeah. times of the year and, yeah. and when it doesn't happen it's it, it, it highlights that you're in a new yes. place yeah. um yeah. which I, I i guess would not have been the case if we'd moved somewhere else in the uk the friendship thing would have been Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. but that was the big oh you're in a new place now Um, things are different here and uh, they'll always be different in in Mm -hmm. many ways Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. so you know we're settled in some ways we know we know where to get things and that kind of stuff but but in terms of uh, lasting deep friendships we just haven't had the time Mm -hmm. yet Mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of just it's a very different place yeah, um, and in terms of the church and the work mm. you've been involved with up till now, what have been some of the things you've been involved with? How has that gone thus far? Um, it, uh, I spent, I've spent a lot of time in the first few months learning Greek. Okay, that was my first initial task, uh, which was a change of pace coming from the Tron, <laughs> um, sort of studying a language and not having a huge amount else uh, pressing or urgent you know that's a big task and it's a lot of work but it's not a your week looks a bit different yeah yeah, my week looked a bit different uh that's changed and things have been added onto my 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 plate and things i mean in many ways uh, a lot of what i've been doing has been normal church functioning stuff teaching sunday school uh leading the youth group um uh prayer meeting leading prayer meetings and preaching occasionally yep. and that kind of thing um and how's the greek it's you, a lot better than it was yeah. when i went uh, <laughs> certainly i i hesitate to say that i'm fluent because there are probably a lot of situations in which i would still really struggle yeah um but my ability to do the things that i need to do has you know improved yeah, no end really um you're probably best asking someone else rather than me about my Greek. I feel like a toddler trying to uh, trying to express myself, um, completely oh, very good. Very fumbling good. all over the place. But uh, others seem to know what I'm saying. That's good. Some that's of the positive. time. So I think at that's least probably... they pretend to know what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> good. Okay. 
Well, as expected, I guess, there's been good things and hard things. And um, But I want to talk about your plans for uh, the future. Mm-hmm. And you've got a, a big kind of exciting project on the horizon. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about that. Uh, we'll, we'll dig into this, but just mm-hmm. broad brush strokes, what's coming and what, why is this a, a priority for you now? Mm. Uh, starting this October, we're hoping to... to um, well, we, we will be beginning a, a Bible school. Okay. Uh, St. Barnabas Bible School. Um, what Cyprus needs is a broad base of theological maturity. Okay. Um, uh, we want the church... Our vision is for the church in Cyprus to... Uh, to, to, to be able to stand faithfully, fruitfully um, over the, the coming generations, really, yep. um, with the various challenges that are going to come. Um, and, and to do that, we, we just need a greater level of understanding of what it is we believe, how that applies to the various situations that are coming along. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to that end, we're, we're, we're starting this Bible school. Okay, so who who is your sort of ideal student to mm-hmm. enrol in the school who, who's, who are you aiming this at um, either someone who is already involved with some form of church or parachurch leadership sure uh, or someone who is likely to be in the next say 10 to 15 years sure, sure. Um, that, that's our kind of our, our target we want the church of 10 15 years time to just have that maturity that it needs to to be fruitful and to yeah. be faithful um, and to continue in its work equipped for it um, okay. Who, who's sort of behind this so obviously you've had a, a major role mm-hmm. um, are there particular links with the church there is it is it sort of by itself how's it kind of organized yeah. um, initially this is a ministry of the Greek Evangelical Church of Cyprus Great. so our links Legally, theologically, yep. uh, personnel-wise, um, they're incredibly strong okay. with, with the Greek church. This is coming out of, 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 of mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, church. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, this kind of thing has been on people's minds for, I mean, decades, okay. really. Um, but now we're in a position where we can actually give it a shot. Uh, and so, yeah, this is coming out of, of, of the Greek church, Greek evangelical church. Yep. Um, in time, it will we aim for it to be an independent um, organization. Sure, sure. Um, it makes it easier logistically. We don't want the Greek the, the Greek church, they, they've got a particular vision to reach Greek-speaking mm-hmm. uh, natives. This is a slightly different vision, slightly different purpose. And so in time, it makes sense to keep those separate things, though obviously completely under the authority of of the churches that are um, are involved with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but those things take time. Cyprus is quite a complicated legal okay. system. Uh, so for now, it, it's very much a Great. ministry of yep, the Greek yep. Evangelical Church. Very good. So who's going to be involved with uh, the sort of teaching side of it? Um, yourself? Yep. Yeah, I'll do about about half. Okay. Um, and, uh, and the minister of the Greek Evangelical Church will do the other half for now. We'll see how things grow. Good. And what what is it gonna what's it gonna look like on the ground in terms of mm. uh, you know week to week? What's what's gonna be involved? Uh, what's a typical day gonna be like at mm-hmm. St Barnabas Bible School? Yeah. The, so the the centerpiece of our first year is a, a one day a week course. Okay. Um, a full day of fairly rigorous teaching. Um, it seems like the way that we can get the most bang for buck at the moment. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We may need to tweak that model, but that's okay. going to be the that's going to be the the the, um, the centerpiece of our first year. Um, we have already been running some, um, so that's going to be an English language okay. um, to meet the target yep. Yep. Um, demographic okay. um, at the moment. And uh, on top of that, we've got some evening classes. Uh, which we've, we've actually been running for the last year already. Okay. Um, in there'll be Greek speaking. Okay. Um, we want to have a Greek speaking option. It may not form a large part of our our, mm-hmm. our target at the moment, but we want to to keep it going. Um, so so those will continue. 
every week. Uh, and then we're also planning to have several day conferences. Okay, um, great. On Saturdays. So yep. three of those planned yep. for the for the Very first good. year. Um, and as I say, we'll probably have to tweak these things based on what works. Yep. But yep. this is a good as, as good a place to start as any, I think. And uh, um, you've got to get going with these things. That's good. Yep. And if you know, if you listen to this, might be familiar with Cornhill. Mm-hmm. Um, to what degree is that a helpful comparison? Is this Cornhill Cyprus or it how, is, how might you distinguish yeah. it a little bit? Uh, it is a helpful comparison in terms of the model, in yep. terms of the 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 time and and how much of the week it's going to take up, mm-hmm. and the fact that we we kind of expect many of our first students to already be involved with some ministry yes. for the rest of the week, um, and the rationale for a part time sort of study program. Yes. All, all of that's very mm-hmm. comparable, mm-hmm. really. Uh, the the main difference is probably that we are less focused on preachers necessarily. We've We've probably got a broader, yeah, okay. uh, broader range. Uh, mm-hmm. We're aiming for a slightly, you know, to to increase the baseline level of theological understanding yes, across okay. quite a ri- wide range of people. Yeah. Uh, so we won't be having uh, preaching classes, sure. For example, um, it may come in time mm. if there's a need there, particularly for that. Um, but that's that's probably the main yeah, that's difference helpful. there. Yeah, that's um, helpful. So you're starting in October. Yeah, October the third. October the third. Yep. And have you got any students enrolled? What's the what's the state <laughs> of play? Or is, is Cyprus last minute dot com? Cyprus is pretty last minute. Okay. <laughs> pretty last minute. We don't have any students enrolled yet. Okay. We have excited noises. Great. Um, hopefully those become concrete excited noises yeah. at some point as people sign up. Well, it's still uh, a while off, isn't it? So, it is a little yeah. while off. Uh, we've got we've got a group of people who you know, individuals who we intend to uh, approach as time draws near yep. um, who would really benefit from this kind of thing yep. uh, but you know uh, pre-summer and after summer are two different worlds <laughs> okay. Um, okay. in terms of organising things in Cyprus the things sort of uh, just do people sort of sleep through the summer is that yeah yep. it's, uh, no, nothing really happens okay. in it. Okay. You've, seen, you've seen what the temperature's <laughs> like there at the moment I don't um, well that's good and the best way to start these things is to start and yes, just absolutely. get going um and uh, well, that's exciting, David. And what what especially can we be praying for you guys? Uh, think with St Barnabas on the horizon. Mm. What are some of the key things to to bear in mind for you? Um, pray for students to sign up. Um, the need is really there, uh, but but pray that we'd be able to show people why this is going to be really beneficial for them and for their churches long term. So uh, please pray for that. Pray that people would then go and actually sign up. Uh, in good time that'd be brilliant um and very encouraging for us um uh, establishing this kind of institution is complicated Mm -hmm. uh so pray for wisdom as myself and the others who are involved with setting it up try and make decisions about working in a uh, theologically diverse setting Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh um about the whole administrative legal side of things how do we set stuff up as a as a institution for the long term that's going to be helpful how you know all of those decisions are are, are complicated yep. uh, and uh, require wisdom and and neither myself or the the others involved have, have quite done something like this before okay. we all have our experience in various ways but mm-hmm. but not mm-hmm. quite in this particular area um we have people we can ask for advice and things but we just pray that that we'd have the wisdom to do that well, yep. to, to, to encourage the long-term flourishing of it, um, the long-term fruitfulness of mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, and continue to pray for us as, as a family yep. um, to really settle in, put down roots, and uh, and be as helpful as we can to the church uh, and to the kingdom yep. in, in Cyprus for uh, as long as the Lord has us there. Yeah, very good. Well, David, uh, uh, that's been great to hear a bit more about some Barnabas in particular. It's exciting. Um, if folk want to find out more about mm. us, how would they do that? Uh, go to our website. You've got a website. We've got a website. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, www.stbarnabasbibleschool.org. Excellent. Very good. I think it's fairly easy to remember <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, not me to repeat it. No, okay. But there'll be a link uh, on the show notes. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Have a look. I mean, there's a, there's a Facebook page and, and an Instagram account or a Put various good. I was on, actually so. on the website in preparation, and it's very good. It's an excellent website. 
Yeah, wow. That's well done. Was that you? It was, but it was, okay. I mean, it's mainly Squarespace and, you know, okay. they sponsoring so. this. Looks you know. impressive. That's a key thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, good. So you've got a bit more time here in the UK. Yeah, uh, a little. Any highlights yeah. before you head back to Cyprus? A week in Cornwall Excellent. coming up. Very good. So well, we're looking forward to that. I hope you get slightly better weather. Although yeah, I guess and we have plenty of good weather. You get good give, us, give us the rain and the wind. You want a bit of that in want. your system before you go back to the sunshine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, that's good. Well, listen, Dave, thanks so much for stopping in and uh, joining us here. It's been great to hear from you. But uh, that's us from Talking Points today. Thanks for stopping by.